Today is Friday, September 6th. What you need to know today about Hurricane Dorian's impact on the Carolinas and new details about a mysterious illness linked to vaping. Plus, the Facebook dating feature is here. We'll tell you how it works. Google has a new way to find your favorite TV show. And coming soon, plant-based shrimp. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Hurricane Dorian will start to move away from the U.S. later today, but it will not go quietly. The Category 2 hurricane is still supposed to bring flooding and even tornadoes to North Carolina and parts of Virginia today. AccuWeather reports it could even make landfall, but if it doesn't, the eye of the storm could still be close enough to the coast to do a lot of damage. Yesterday, the Carolinas felt the biggest impact. There were at least 20 tornadoes connected to this storm. One damaged a bunch of mobile homes in a coastal town in North Carolina. And many streets in South Carolina cities like Myrtle Beach and Charleston were completely flooded. CNN says so far, five people are reported dead in the U.S. And as of early this morning, more than 250,000 homes and businesses are without power. Of course, the worst damage from this storm is still in the Bahamas. ABC News reports at least 30 people are confirmed dead now. And unfortunately, that number could go way up as relief workers search more areas. Officials say many more people are still missing. So volunteers in Florida are gathering donations for people in the Bahamas, and the U.S. Coast Guard has rescued and helped hundreds of survivors. Up next for Dorian, the storm is expected to move further out into the Atlantic later tonight. Forecasters say it'll still bring bad weather to parts of New England. In fact, parts of Massachusetts are under a tropical storm warning, and beaches in New York will be closed this weekend. State and federal health officials are investigating a mysterious and deadly lung illness that they believe is connected to vaping. NBC News says more than 360 cases have been reported around the country, and so far at least two deaths are connected to this, one in Illinois and one in Oregon. They're the first known deaths linked to vaping. Well, now health officials are looking into a certain chemical they say might be responsible for the illness. It's an oil derived from vitamin E called vitamin E acetate. Officials found high levels of the oil in almost all of the marijuana samples it took from sick patients, but they did not find it in nicotine products. Vitamin E is not known to be harmful as a nutritional supplement or when applied as a skin treatment, but when it's inhaled, like from a vape pen, that could be a different story. Though officials say it's still too early to know if it's actually to blame, so they are still investigating. Stocks around the world went up as the U.S. and China said trade talks would start up again. Negotiators are set to meet next month in Washington, and even the possibility of a truce is enough to get investors excited. The Wall Street Journal reports the S&P 500, Dow Jones, and Nasdaq were all up yesterday, more than 1%. It made up for some of the losses we saw last month. Stocks are also up in Asia. Remember, the world's two largest economies have been putting tariffs on each other's goods. The U.S. just added more tariffs this month, and China retaliated with its own. They're essentially adding an extra tax on imports. And it's been making businesses and investors nervous. So stay tuned to see what happens next month and whether the trade talks can actually lead to a trade deal. Also of note when it comes to the economy, the labor market is still looking pretty good. A new report found more jobs than expected were added in August, and more steady numbers are expected from the Labor Department today when it releases its employment report. Michigan State University will have to pay a record $4.5 million fine for how it handled the Larry Nasser case. Remember, Nasser was a doctor for USA Gymnastics and also worked for MSU. He's now in prison for sexually abusing his patients. Well, the Federal Education Department says university officials got complaints about the abuse, but didn't do enough. They didn't deal with it or report it. And it's not just a moral thing. It actually breaks the Cleary Act, a law that requires all colleges to report campus crimes. Michigan State will pay the largest ever fine for breaking that law. Ezekiel Elliott just became the highest paid running back in NFL history. ESPN reports Elliott has agreed to sign a six-year, $90 million extension with the Dallas Cowboys. The previous highest paid running back made half that. Also in sports, Serena Williams is going to the U.S. Open final this weekend. She won last night, so next up, she'll play Bianca Andreescu, who, by the way, is the first Canadian singles player to ever reach a U.S. Open final, and she just won the Rogers Cup last month. 
Yahoo Sports says Andrescu calls it a dream come true to play against Serena Williams in the finals. ESPN says it'll be the largest age gap between women finalists at any major tournament. Andrescu is 19 and Williams is 37. Remember, if Williams wins, it'll be her 24th major title, a record-tying victory. Several more stories still ahead, but first let's take a quick break to thank this week's sponsor, M.M. LaFleur. This is a company who doesn't want you to have to choose between style and comfort and convenience, especially when it comes to dressing for work. M.M. LaFleur designs thoughtful and stylish clothing. So their collection features machine washable fabrics, adjustable hems, deep pockets, and suits that are designed to be packable for those busy travelers. M.M. LaFleur has you covered whether you need a great outfit and some versatile options for an upcoming work trip or conference, or you just want to refresh your daily work wardrobe. They sent me a great high-waisted knee-length skirt that works with so many different tops, and it has a high-quality, comfortable material. And right now, new customers can get $25 toward their first purchase with the code NEWSWORTHY. Just visit mmlafleur.com newsworthy for more details and to get that $25 gift. That's mmlafleur.com newsworthy, and you can find that link in today's show notes. Now back to the news. Facebook has officially entered the business of love with a new feature called Facebook Dating. We've told you about this before, but it was only available in some countries. Now it has just debuted in the U.S. So here's how it works. The Verge says people 18 and older can opt into the service and make a separate Facebook page. Then Facebook does the rest. It will suggest matches based on preferences you picked when creating your profile, your interests, and Facebook activity. Your current friends will not match with you unless you want them to. There's something called the secret crush feature where you can add several Facebook or Instagram friends and followers to a list. And if they secretly crush you back, you both get a notification. Facebook dating will also match you if you're going to the same Facebook events. Of course, there's a lot of competition out in the world of dating apps. Facebook's feature is available now on the Facebook app in a separate tab. It's sort of like Tinder, but for movies and shows. Google is releasing a new feature to help you find something to watch, and it even involves a little swiping left and right. So soon, when you search on Google for things like good shows to watch or what to watch, a new carousel-style menu with TV shows and movies will pop up. Engadget says you'll swipe left or right depending on if you like the show or not, and the more you swipe, the more personalized your recommendations become. You can also select what streaming services you subscribe to so you only get suggestions for the services you'll use. The new feature should be rolling out soon. And speaking of Google, the company is partnering with General Motors. The Wall Street Journal reports the automaker is going to start building Google's apps directly into its cars. So that means you'll be able to access the apps like Google Maps and the Google Voice Assistant right from the car's touchscreen displays. TechCrunch says this will start in 2021, and it'll go into GM's four main car brands, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. All right, so we've talked about plant-based burgers here before, but what about plant-based shellfish? CNBC reports Tyson is investing in new wave foods, and the company makes plant-based shrimp. It's made from seaweed, soy protein, and natural flavors. Tyson will help the company grow and eventually start selling the shrimpless shrimp to restaurants. Eventually, New Way Foods hopes to make plant-based crab and lobster as well. A quick note that it's Grandparents' Day on Sunday, September 8th. Generations United started the day as a way to encourage all generations to do something to engage with another generation. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening. And thank you for trusting us each weekday for your information. We do not take it lightly. My team and I work so hard to make sure you are always informed. Of course, we rely on this amazing community of listeners to help us spread the word about the show and help us grow. So thank you for continuing to share the newsworthy with your friends and family. And I, of course, love seeing what you post on social media as well. Also, an extra shout out to the Newsworthy Insiders. We are so grateful for your support. And you can now get a month free when you pay for the next year up front. Also, I'll be sending you a special email soon, so stay tuned. All right, that's it for this week. As always, you can read more about any of the stories we talked about in this episode. Just look in your podcast app or go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. We'll be back with more news on Monday. Have a great weekend. <music> 